So you're a fast boy. You want high horsepower, flashy looks, and a fun experience on your motorcycle. Well, Yamaha will sell you this 1,000cc superbike on the showroom floor. But if you look to your right, you'll probably see something even better for the street in the form of this MT-10. Today we're going to look at these two motorcycles. Stick around. As many of you know, this is our giveaway Yamaha R1. September 15th is actually the last day to sign up and get entry, so make sure you go to yamanube.co down there and sign up to win this motorcycle for free because someone is gonna get the keys to this thing. It's gonna show up at their driveway, which is pretty awesome. But let's talk about this thing a little bit. This is Yamaha's top of the line super bike. We're talking 200 horsepower, 83 foot pounds of torque, more electronics than the NASA Control Center, and just an all around super committed and extreme package. If you are looking for the finest track day toy that Japan will sell you, this is kind of it to be honest. But maybe you want to go fast, but you want to be comfy while you do it. Well, Yamaha actually took their R1 and turned it into a naked bike here. That's what we've got, the MT-10. Now, I rented this motorcycle on Twisted Road for the day, and if you want to rent a bike like this, click that link down in the description below. Get yourself started with a free day of riding. Now, while this bike is very similar to the R1, basically the engine, the chassis, the suspension, it is detuned a little bit, so it's only making 160 horsepower, which feels weird to say that we're in a world where it's only 160 horsepower, but it is making the same 82 foot-pounds of torque. The main difference, though, is the way this motorcycle is geared. It's down-tuned and makes more torque down low, which is what you want out of a naked bike platform. It also comes in a little bit lower in the price point at $12,999, but for that you do see a couple of concessions like a slightly cheaper dash, some budget parts in the cockpit, and kind of just a little less fit and finish from the R1. Now we're gonna get these bikes out on a twisty road, we're gonna get them out on the highway, and we're gonna get them in the city to see how they really stack up next to each other. Alrighty guys, mounted up here on two of the finest sport bikes that Yamaha and honestly Japan has to offer, the MT-10 and the R1. Spike, how do you feel on that thing, man? I feel great, man. This is one of the best bikes because it's based on the R1. It has all of the, you know, top quality suspension componentry, that engine. It's just, the frame handles beautifully, but it's a naked bike, so it's comfortable to sit on. You know, it's the full package, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's the big reason why these Hyper Nakeds are so popular in the segment nowadays is because, you know, <laughs> there's no compromising, really. I think spec sheet warriors might look at the MT-10, they're like, oh, dude, it makes 40 less horsepower than the R1. Do you feel like it's any slower than the R1, honestly? No. Oh, God, no. <laughs> this, this thing, it feels faster than the R1. And this is something that we'll be able to show when we get out on the highway. Um, but just the way that you work your way through the gears on this motorcycle, make it feel faster because the gears are shorter together, you're working the gearbox more, you're, you, you hear it winding out more, uh, and the, because it's a naked bike, the wind blast, it all creates a feeling of speed that the R1 doesn't give you until you get to like 150 miles an hour. Yeah, and it's just like, I don't know, it's, 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 we talk about this a lot where the numbers really don't tell the full story and I think the MT-10 is one of those bikes where you ride it and it just feels like such a rocket ship. Um, I spent a lot of time with one in Tucson earlier this year and I was just floored at how quick that bike accelerates from 0 to 100 off a stoplight, you know? Not that I would have done such a thing, but, <laughs> you know, it's really rapid and again, the, because the gears are short, the rev ceiling is shorter, you get there a lot quicker, you feel like you're working it more. Now, however, I think one downside of the MT-10, given that it is a cheaper bike, you know, Yamaha introduces it at $12,999 on the showroom floor, uh, it doesn't have some of the super awesome technology like the R1 has. So I think you're probably missing that down quick shifter, huh? Yeah, I do wish I had an auto blipper. Uh, that would be really nice. But you know what? I'm still, I, I get the amazing handling of the frame. I get the top quality suspension components and I get the engine. So that, that's the reason why people love the R1 so much, aside from, you know, it's drop-dead gorgeous looks. Uh, you know, on a twisty road, 
it doesn't feel wonky. It doesn't feel like it, it is going to wiggle and squirm on you in a turn. It feels so planted and it holds a line perfectly yeah. because it's essentially an R1. Yeah, there's honestly, besides the engine being tuned a little bit better for torque, which is number one, great for the street, and the handlebars, which is also great for the street, the fundamentals of that motorcycle is an R1. The frame is the same, the wheels are the same, the swing arm is the same, the subframe's a little different, but you're not going to notice that. Yep. And it just has that beautiful flick in that this bike has, all in a package that works so well for the street. Um, yep. I think the MT10 is a, is a solid like 9 out of 10, or maybe a 10 out of 10 bike. I really enjoy it. Yeah, it's. It and this is something we'll get into a little bit more later, but it's the kind of motorcycle that you can spend all day on, you know, unlike a leader bike. Yeah, a leader bike is great for quick blast down your twi favorite twisty road, maybe a, a weekend track day type of thing, but I wouldn't want to spend six hours in the saddle on this thing. But speaking of which, let's uh, swap out up here. What do you say? You want to jump aboard 200 horsepower? I absolutely would. Oh boy, I can already feel the difference in the seat and the oh baby, I love this handlebars. <laughs> However, yeah, it is a little unfair. This MT10 does not have an exhaust fitted to it. <laughs> but I mean, the clutch, the throttle, it all feels just like an R1, though. It's pretty nuts. Oh man, oh, I hate the seating position. It's <laughs> awful. I love that though. It's pretty ridiculous, you gotta admit, like, I mean, I know we talk about how these two bikes are very similar, but the R1's the R1, you know? Yeah, it's, it's special, it's beyond special. Yeah, and I think, you know, some people might look at the MT-10 and look at the R1 and they're like, oh, why is the R1 so much more expensive? I mean, it's got a lot of electronics in it, it's, it's been built to a specification that the MT-10 just isn't, and, I mean, it's, it's a lot of the electronics too, I'm not gonna lie. Six axis yeah. IMU, completely programmable rider modes down to like the nth degree like you have different levels of wheelie control on that thing you know do you want to pop a dank nooner or do you want to pop a baby nooner you know Wh whatever you want do you want it to hover or do you want to keep the front wheel on the ground you know it's it's really nice to be able to uh to, to be able to just tell the bike this is how i want you to ride and then you just do what you want yeah you know that's just got, it's got three modes of traction control and three power modes and that's it. One thing I gotta give it to the R1 is it probably has one of the sexiest tails in all of motorcycling. That one little sliver of red light, the cut out rear uh, bearings, man, it's so cool. Yeah, and you know what? It, on the highway, it feels fine too because I've got the wind hitting me in the chest that helps keep me off the, you know, keep my weight off my wrists. It's, on a highway, it's okay. It's fine. Yeah, whereas the MT-10, you know, if, if you were going to do a lot of highway miles, I would probably get a windscreen on this thing, maybe, uh, you know, adjust a couple things here and there. But overall, wow, what a comfortable motorcycle. I can't believe how comfortable this thing is. It's it's great. I mean, the first thing I noticed is how hard and flat this seat is on yeah. the R1. It is, it is literally just a plank. So one thing I wanted to bring up with you is I'm sure you'll, you'll want to talk about as this guy's braking ahead of us, the brake lever feel is night and day between these two motorcycles. Absolutely. The, uh, the front brake feel on this motorcycle compared to the MT-10 is, is sublime. It yeah. feels so good on the street. And obviously, you know, you had, uh, you and Brandon had issues with it fading. Uh, but that was under track. extreme track conditions, you know, an expert level rider really ripping on it. Um, yeah. yeah I, I for, think for the average Joe, it's more than enough. Yeah. I mean, this is a one finger brake. Uh, for all intents and purposes. You really don't need more than one finger to tow this motorcycle to a stop. Yeah, I, I honestly cannot believe the mid-range punch the MT-10 has. Holy crap. It's biblical. Like, th that thing God is... dude. It's so savage in the mid-range. It, yeah. It, just, it rips your arms off. <laughs> it does, yeah. Yeah, so one thing I wanted to talk about is, although these are both cross-plane fours, they're literally the same engine, very similar, uh, because the R1 is tuned for top end power, you get that absolutely classic Yamaha, like sort of crossover from growl to howl, you know? Yeah. And uh, you don't get that as much with the MT-10. You do still get the cross plane grumble and it's really awesome, but it never transforms into that insane top end rush, you know? Yeah, it, the, it's very much tuned for about six and a half thousand RPM. Yeah. That's where that motorcycle is most alive. 
Um, and as a result, it actually, it makes it a little bit harder to ride, in my opinion. Um, it's, the, the throttle is a little bit snatchier. Uh, this has that kind of puppy dog phase where it's just, it's not really awake below 5,000 RPM. Uh, as you can see on the dash there, the, the hash marks are so small that they basically never intend for you to be there. And that's something that's unique to the R1 as opposed to the MT line of bikes is that the MT bikes, you know, they all suffer from the snatchy throttle syndrome. Mm -hmm. uh, they all feel a little wonky and the MT10 is no different. Uh, unless you get a nice tune on it, maybe an exhaust, maybe change up the fueling a little bit, then you can help it, but it'll still be a little wonky. Whereas the R1 is, is super good from the factory. And it's even yeah. better because we have a tune and an exhaust on there. So it's just, I think the fueling on that bike in B mode is damn near perfect. Yeah, it's, it's very, very good. And as we're starting to come to this red light, I can feel that brake already. It's just little squeezes is all you need. And you just bleed off 10 miles an hour here, five miles an hour there. Yeah. It, it, the brake is so good. It, uh, it is a bummer that this is a twisted road bike because I want to do nothing more than to clutch this baby up in second gear because I know it would just absolutely have a blast. <laughs> I also think that's a police officer in front of me, so maybe maybe I don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, that's a fancy boy cop too. So yeah, yeah, you know, incognito he's got the boy. New squad car, so he's he's probably pulled over a handful of bikers out here. Yeah, he's ready. But you know, as I'm riding this motorcycle, getting back to the vlog here, as I'm riding this motorcycle, I'm looking down at the dash, and all I care about is speed, really, on this bike. And yeah. that's what it shows me. But I'm also seeing, you know, the weight. Uh, shifting around on that little dash there. I'm seeing gear. I'm seeing all sorts of little pieces of information that I don't, just don't give a shit about. And well, what is cool, what's cool about that bike is if you don't care about that stuff, you can change all that. You can put that baby in track mode display and then you don't see any of that stuff. But that is, that's one thing where, you know, you look at the MT-10's dash and it tells you everything you need to know in obviously a less sophisticated package. But I don't feel like I'm missing out by having that little LCD. Yeah, but I think in the segment, Yamaha's got to compete with the likes of the BMW S1000 RR with its eight inch, you know, full color display or whatever it is nowadays. It's got like an iPad at the top of it. So Yo. everyone's kind of moving to that, which is a bit of a bummer because I feel like they're totally unnecessary. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just shocked that the MT-10, how comfortable it is, man. Like I, I, like you said, literally could spend the whole day in the saddle here. And this is another situation where, you know, we just, we cannot rightfully test these motorcycles on the street in terms of no. power I mean, it's there there's nothing that can touch them really and honestly the it would go to the r1 the r1 is faster than the mt10 it is undoubtedly so um but uh, i think it would surprise a lot of people probably from zero to 80 or zero to 100 how much the mt10 will keep up i mean the r1's only going to start really creeping away after 100 miles per hour then it'll really just start pulling like an animal you know yep because of the way the MT-10 is geared, it'll give up around about 120 from what I may or may not have seen off camera. Yeah, uh, and it's it's your it's the arrows too, right? You've got all this wind on your chest. You're, you're limited by the aerodynamics of this bike. It's yeah. sort of a flying brick, you know? On the street, you're not going to be doing that. No. So it's, uh, it's all about the like zero to 60. How, how fast can you get to highway speed and how much fun can you have while you're doing it? And the MT-10 is about the most ridiculous thing from 0 to 60 that I've ridden aside from a Super Duke. Yeah, no, th this thing is absolutely stupid from stoplight to stoplight. And it's probably why the tire on this thing is completely squared off because the owner at Twisted Road <laughs> probably just does it because that's exactly what this thing is good for. It rips fat fucking wheelies and just rips from stoplight to stoplight. Yep. So much fun. However, like, I'm, like, I'm in fourth gear, look. Yep. They're, they're so quick. Oh, a seat, an actual seat with cushioning. Yeah, this, the pegs are so high on this bike, it's awesome. <laughs> it's a little race bike. Let's try second gear roll on, huh? Or not. Hey, there you go, getting that wheel. <laughs> I just, just saw you, I saw you wheelie in first, grab a gear and continue to wheelie. Yup. <laughs> My God, this mid-range is so good. Yeah. The sound. Oh this, my God, this is one of the best engines ever. It's the best sounding motorcycle, I think, that you could just buy. Absolutely. 
Like, God, yes, damn. the Tuono and the RSV4 sound great, but yeah. this they thing also... is one of a kind. You ready? Yep. Okay, three, two, one, go. There you go. Man, that was so crystal clear of where the power is made on these bikes. Yep. It, that was like the perfect uh, the, the textbook. Yeah. Literally, literally up until the same rev range, we were identical. And then once I hit the power band for the top end, it's just wee. <laughs> yep. You just, you, you literally just walked away. It was yeah. like I wasn't even moving. Now, the, yeah, the, the top end grunt on a modern day leader bike is just, it's untouchable. You cannot touch these bikes. But now I'm curious to get them out in the city and see uh, I'm, <laughs> how well these two bikes fare. <laughs> Let's do it. Alrighty boys, we're here mounted up in the city now doing a pretty obvious comparison. Um, <laughs> it's pretty clear that a super hunched over leader bike is not the best thing for the city. But Spite, I'd love for you to tell us about why the MT-10 is just so much better and how you're feeling going in these slow speeds. Well, as slow speeds, it's it's pretty tame um again that that savage mid-range you roll up on that pretty quickly so uh it is pretty easy to accidentally yeet this bike into the trunk of this kia rio right here <laughs> however fittingly uh, enough it has a nasa sticker so you'd go off into space too you know <laughs> use it as the ramp right into yeah. infinity <laughs> um but it's it's M way more comfortable. I can actually like reach the bars when I'm sitting upright. You're in neutral, just kind of chilling, having to sit upright. I can. Yeah, I gotta do this every time I stop with this bike. Uh, mostly because I do have some back problems myself, but I can't just sit here hunched over. It'll just destroy my back. Any break I can, I take. Whereas that thing, you can just sit on it. You know. Yeah, you can just chill, and you know the the reach to the ground is really nice and easy for a tall guy like me, and I don't have to find myself on the pegs you know yeah those pegs are nice and high up which is great when you're on the bike going fast but stoplight to stoplight having a low peg is kind of nice yeah these uh, i mean these are race oriented foot pegs here so they do tend to be quite perched up and your knees just end up being really squished and you know really compact uh, i noticed as we made our way down here to downtown which is a good 40 minutes from where we were up in the hills you know, my knees were pretty spent after arriving here, and I know you were also having some knee issues on this bike as well. Yeah, I barely fit on the R1. Just yeah. barely. Yeah. Um, it, but this bike, I'm just completely comfortable. The one thing that I am noticing, though, is how wide this tank is. Yeah. You know, by comparison, this tank is really, really wide. Uh, yeah, whereas the R1 sits actually super narrow for what it is. Um, you know, being a big 1,000cc superbike, I actually feel like my knees are pretty close together. Mm-hmm. Mine are, mine are about shoulder width apart, and it's it's really kind of strange. Another thing I'm noticing is that I'm not very hot sitting on this motorcycle, and i got to imagine that you are roasting. Oh, I definitely am, yeah. <laughs> uh, given that this bike is in a higher state of tune, it's now telling me that it is 221 degrees Fahrenheit, I assume somewhere around where I am. It says C temp, I don't know what temperature that's reading, but yeah, I'm super hot on this bike. <laughs> <laughs> and that It's that not also Ducati Panigale hot, but it, it is hot. It comes down to the fact that that thing's wrapped in plastic. You know, it can't breathe like this thing can. Nope. This can just vent air out wherever. Uh, inline four naked bikes stay relatively cold as you ride them. And that's one of the reasons why I love them so much. That seat's so much more comfortable than this one. This is, literally feels like wood, you know? Yeah. Uh, my, my butt is actually kind of hurting after a little bit on this thing. And it's like, honestly, that thing's geared so much better. You can actually maybe get into second or maybe third around here, whereas I'm never going to get out of first gear here. Never. No. No. It, like, even on the bridge, going down across the river, you, re you maybe you get into second. Maybe. Wouldn't it be great if those, like, rent-a-scooter companies just started putting R1s out there for people? <laughs> they just took the shifter lever off? Yeah. They're like, screw it, have fun. One thing I can appreciate in traffic, though, now that I, now that it, I don't demand performance from it, is the weaker lever up here. Yeah. It's way less like that, 
Yeah, it's more progressive, kind of softer. Mm -hmm. Makes more sense for the environment that it's designed for. Yeah, I mean this this Nissan Master Cylinder. I mean, look at that. <laughs> That's all I have, you know. And it's yeah, stops. it literally just locks the bike up, <laughs> which is really great when you want it to perform. But when you're just in stop and go, you really don't need all that much power out of the brakes. Get everybody the quintessential Austin street experience. I think the quintessential Austin Street experience is 35. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, though, that thing does look way cooler than this does. Yeah, we were parked over there at the bridge, and I definitely noticed some people looking back at this and not at that, unfortunately. This looks a little dorky, a little utilitarian. And that yeah. thing is, you know, it's just sex in motion, that machine. Yeah, the R1 is a drop-dead sexy motorcycle, and I think it's a big reason why, even though it is uncomfortable to ride on the daily, I wouldn't be I wouldn't mind being seen on this thing, that's for sure. Well, but I guess that's the point of the R1, right? It's all about it's all about feel more so than anything. It's all about the flash, baby. But yeah, th I mean this is probably the most miserable use case for the R1 is just stop and go urban <laughs> traffic. It's, it's like so bad, dude. <laughs> I can only imagine. I'm I'm sitting here, I got my nice upright bars, I don't have a weird bend in my back, I'm just chilling. Yeah, I'm not there. chilling. You literally look like you're a gargoyle. Yeah, and I can't even, I can't open it anywhere, because if I open the throttle, that happens. And if you crack it too hard, you're just going to spin the wheel. Yeah, which I just did. <laughs> is, is that what happened, the wheel spun? Yeah, it was like, whoa, 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 couldn't catch traction. <laughs> Here's a question. How does the suspension feel to you going over some of these city bumps? Not too bad. Um, I, I kind of, I kind of understand what the R1's going for, so I, I'm just like, yeah, you know, it's a little stiff and bumpy, but but not too bad, honestly. I'm sure the MT-10 from factory, I mean, they have the exact same suspension setup, so I'm sure you could dial it in, whatever, but I've wondered from factory, the MT-10 is dialed in a slightly bit softer, you know? Well, I also have a, I have more seat to have absorbed these bumps, you know? Yeah, you got the cushion there. These so go straight into these... my spine. <laughs> yeah, all of these bumps, I, I have a little bit more just cushion action going on. God, why? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please turn green. Uh, is it? Uh, you gonna? Up, 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 uh, Okay, bye. <laughs> Fuck me. No! <laughs> God! <laughs> why must I suffer? <laughs> why? <laughs> this is absolutely ridiculous. We've hit every single fing red light, dude. Oh my f, bro. This oh, is God. ridiculous. All right. If you guys learned anything from that debacle, uh, how about you don't get a leader bike in Texas in summer? <laughs> Sweet oh, Jesus. another red light. Oh, dude, of course. Why, why wouldn't there be? At this, at this point, I'm just expecting we're going to hit every single red light back to the office. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Alrighty, Spy, let's round out this video. So can you think of any case in which you would want an R1 over an MT-10? Because I feel like the MT-10 makes such a strong case for itself. The only time I could think of the R1 being acceptable is when you're just buying it as a track toy. I Honestly, uh, if you're riding on the street, there's no, you, you don't have to live that life. Nope. <laughs> You can you can live better. You can make a better choice, and it's the MT10 right here. You know, I'm comfortable. I'm a little warm because the engine is still so popped up. Yeah. But it cools down very quickly once I get moving. It's very comfortable. It makes a great amount of power, and literally, it feels faster than the R1. It does, yeah. So honestly, I think the MT10, and it's cheaper. It's like five thousand or four thousand dollars cheaper. Just get the MT-10. Yeah, I have a hard time uh, imagining a world in which you would need an R1 over an MT-10 unless you are... I, I would say, even if you are thinking of going to the track, the MT-10 is going to do you just fine for most racetracks. Um, it's a perfectly capable bike. It's still an R1 frame, still an R1 suspension. Um, you know, I'd say unless you're doing 10 plus track days a year, which for most people is a lot, I'd say just stick with the MT-10 and you'll still be able to go do that and have fun and rip around and have a blast. And then you can ride that thing on the street whenever you want, all day long. It's so comfortable. So yeah, that's it. Oh, no! So my sweet little squid, this video is actually over. But lucky for you, click on this one right here. You can keep watching your sweet Papa Yam delivering you the motorcycle content you've come to know and love. Don't worry, I'll wait.
I'll be here waiting for you. You're going to click on that video.